Hello everyone, my talk is stochastic resonance in a triple cavity. Triple cavity is a kind of combined structure. Here we will first show what, why, and how we focus on the combined structure. Generally, a combined structure is understood as a tube of varying cross section, like this. It exists in many active systems like iron channel, covenant tubes, and zeolites. The existence of a confined structure has an important role in a system's behavior. Here are examples. In this figure, rows are confined inside the structure. And here, when no confinements, particles can move directly from one to two. And while when the boundary exists, the trajectory becomes from 1 to 0 and then reflected to 3. Based on this, more and more related applications have been discovered. Examples are zeolites as an excellent catalyst for converting gasoline to diesel. A tube with a variable diameter can achieve high purity particle separation. Thus, confined structures is an object of widespread concern. Many models are proposed to contract confinements from aspects like boundary condition and geometry shapes and so on. Stochastic resonance is a widely mm, researched phenomenon. It occurs in dynamical systems which are subjected to periodic signal and random noise. Its characteristics are given here. SR stems from the studies about ancient climate. Hereafter, inspired by the two states, Structure of cold and warm, as the impassable potentials coming from areas like biology chemical is studied. Meanwhile, extensions to systems with triple and multiple potentials are performed and applied to energy acquisition, image processing, and so on. However, these are results for a free environment. When considering systems with confinement, is there still SR? If yes, how does the confined structure affect the SR? Related studies started in 2008 um, by Brad. Results indicated that the irregular, irregularity of the boundaries results in the generation of an utility potential and uh, then induce SR. Hereafter, SR in several double cavities with two units are developed, like cavities with sharpness and uh, oscillatory cavity. Among the studies, only rarely extended the results to cavities with more or less units. Inspired by the promotion of bistable to tristable potential, a question that does SR also exists in a triple cavity occurs? To answer it, we do the following works. Here, the model in our study is given. Equation 1 is to use the, to model the transport of the overdamped particle. The noise is Gaussian wise noise. J and Ft are external forces with uh, parameters Gf0 and omega. Equation 2 and figure 1 shows the discussed triple cavity with channel parameters A, I. The main indicator to characterize SR is the spectral amplification eta with definition 3. A peak in the eta and the D curve means the occurrence of SR. The numerical method to calculate SR are performed through the OLA algorithm, as shown here. Finally, results and conclusions around the four items are proposed.
Firstly, the comparison of SI in the triple and the double cavities that has a similar maximum and minimum widths and the distance between two maximum widths are studied. From a single trajectory, we find as D increases, the jump between units changes from regular to regular and then to random. This contributes to a maximum in eta D curves. Figure A shows that eta in the triple cavity is larger than in the double cavity, and that the D, the maximum located, is large. Uh, figure B shows that the triple structure can broaden the region of system parameters that can induce SR. Secondly, SI in the triple cavity and in a triple potential with the same function is studied. From figure A, the maximum of eta in the triple potential is larger than in the cavity, which can be explained by the jumps in the single trajectory. As we can see, for the moderate D, jumps between wells in the potential is more regular than the jumps between units in the cavity. This is potential, this is cavity. Fig B shows that a vertical J, a vertical J that is satisfying a certain range is required for a star in the cavity, while not for the potential. Thirdly, influence of channel parameters is concerned. In this page, when a zero equals to minus eight, um, 27, the three units of the cavity are not connected, as shown here by the uh, blue, by the yellow lines. In this case, um, a particle can only move within the unit where its initial position is located and can't jump to the other two units as shown in this, fi this figure. In this case, no matter what D is, it keeps uh, small. Meanwhile, for D equals to um, 0 0.01, particles in each unit move regularly between the units two end points. When D is 0.8, trajectories in each unit becomes random and fill the whole unit. Um, this leads to the decreasing eta as D increases. Then when a zero changes, units are connected. Particles can move among them. Thus, eta in is much larger than the previous one, as shown in figure A. When a zero decreases to a certain degree, its impact on the system's behavior will no longer be obvious, as shown by the results for minus 0.38 and minus 0.35. Here, influences of A2 and A6 are given. Figure A shows that for decreasing A2, the maximum of eta decreases as that becomes weak, and D needed for inducing as that increases. For A6, except for regulate the maximum of eta and the optimal D, it can also destroy SR, as shown in figure B, uh, and uh, the single trajectories. When A6 equals to 130, as D increases, jumps between units change from regular to regular with some random and then to random. Thus, uh, therefore, eta always decreases. When A6 equals to 135, as D increases, jump between units changes from regular to regular and then to random, which leads to a maximum of eta. Finally, influences of force parameters are discussed. For G, its influence 
on eta depends on d, and its value affects the relations of eta and d, see fig A. For eta vs d, when d is small, an increase of an increase of g leads to a decrease of eta. When d is large, g doesn't affect eta. For eta vs d, when g is near zero, uh, an increase of d leads to a decrease of eta. And otherwise, eta and the d curve has a maximum. Figure B is for omega. Here, for any for any d, the increase of omega leads to a decrease of eta. Although the decreasing trend is obvious for smaller d and weakens for larger d. However, the value of omega affects the relations of d and eta. When omega is small, eta and d have a curve have a maximum, then the influence of D will no longer be obvious. Fig C is for F0. First, the relations of F0 and eta depend on D. For smaller D, eta D curve has a maximum. For larger D, an increase of F0, F0 leads to a decreasing eta. In addition, F0 also affects the relation of D and eta. For a certain range, the smaller F0 is, the more obvious SR. Otherwise, F0 will destroy SR. Finally, the main conclusions are summarized here. My talk is over. Thank you.